Welcome to Normal World, everybody. How are you tonight? I hope everybody can hear me. Can you hear me? I can hear you just fine. Oh, my mic works now. All right, let's get to it. Carl Nassib, the NFL's first openly gay player, is retiring. Nassib, a sack specialist, was also a pretty good defensive end. <laughs> also terrible tight end. Not, not tight at all. Very, very loose. Very loose. Very loose end. Loose end. Excellent fullback. <laughs> Always had a full back. DiGiorno. DiGiorno just came out with a pizza that has pineapple on one side and pickles on the other. No matter what side you pick, you're pregnant. <laughs> it's disgusting. Awful. Can you imagine? That's got to be... No, ugh. Ugh. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi is changing the name of India to Bharat because according to Modi, he was tired of white tourists complaining. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I could see that happening. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, well, yeah. What's his name? Biden's about to go over there. That shouldn't throw him off. <laughs> <laughs> Ethan Hawke opened up about uh, the experience of directing his daughter in a movie which had a sex scene. Uh, director Quentin Tarantino applauded Hawke's work, describing it as vulnerable and honest, while Woody Allen described him as lucky. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to tonight's show. Let's meet our panel. Derek Richards is joining me again as co-host. How are you tonight, I'm doing my fantastic, my friend. How are you? I'm doing good. I can't complain. I gotta get some pineapple and pickled pizza. Yeah, who wouldn't eat that? What garbage person? <laughs> Just stop making it. I, I don't know what... Again, you didn't see pizza like that before dispensaries were all over the place. That's actually a good point. Yeah, it's... And Matthew McClowry is also here. I don't know why I keep calling him Matthew. He goes by Matt. Good evening, Matt. America. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to try what it would feel like to be normal. It worked really well. <laughs> you sold you it. You didn't at all come off more like a killer. <laughs> so <it's... laughs> Good evening, America. <laughs> Hi. You didn't look at all like you got a white panel van with a puppy and a bag of candy in it. <laughs> you didn't all look like Ted Bundy representing himself. <laughs> I will have no attorney. It's incredible. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll do it. I have enough charisma. I got this. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, are you sure? You kind of know what happened. <laughs> I talked all these bitches into my car. Oh, come can, on. Now I just got to convince a jury of what, 12 people? I just gotta, I gotta, it's, just like, it's like convincing 12 people to get into a beetle. <laughs> <laughs> the serial killer clown car. Mm -hmm. That's what he drove too. Did he really? A lot of people drove Beatles back then. Yeah, I did not know it was that. Kind of uh, the uh, economy car of of the time. Yeah, yeah. He, he in the in the back is the uh, engine, and in the front is the trunk where you keep uh, the tire iron. That's right. <laughs> you get the <laughs> pork him upside the head and boom, bop him on the old noodle. Well, let's get into this. Matt, mm -hmm. looking good. Thank a, you. a Delta flight was forced to land. Uh, we talked this about a little bit about this yesterday uh, after a passenger had explosive diarrhea. Oddly enough, uh, as a frequent flyer of Delta, that passenger wasn't me. <laughs> yeah, this is a, a biohazard issue. I, you know, we've had a passenger who had diarrhea all the way through the airplane, so they wanted to come back to Atlanta. Hot Atlanta, the ATL. Oof. Which stands for ass too loose. <laughs> Dude, that's disgusting. I like Delta because it's got the TVs in the back of the seat. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You always got to enjoy that. And there's rarely diarrhea all over the place. I got to be honest. It's, it's almost never. Well, I was surprised that they turned the flight around, but the flight was going from Atlanta to what? Barcelona? Is that how far it was? Yeah. And they only yeah. got like two hours in and they went, yeah, this person's ass is exploding. We've got to go back to... Uh... Were they drinking poison water getting ready for Barcelona? I... Not that I know if the water is bad there. Maybe it's cleaner. I don't know. Matt, have you been to Barcelona? No, I have not. I just know if it had been Frontier or Spirit, they still would have taken off. <laughs> well, yeah. They just would have charged you. Yeah. They would have charged you extra. <laughs> for dropping a deuce in the aisle? Yeah, for the passenger oh. who had diarrhea in 2012. Ah, oh, I can't even imagine. Yeah, well, it's never been cleaned. Yeah. Ever. Um, yeah, that's just part of it. 
They're like, yeah, there's somebody who's had diarrhea all the way to the back. Yes, we call him the co-pilot. <laughs> They actually use those jets. It's like the, the plane. have a twenty-five dollar charge to use the toilet now. <laughs> yeah, it's just you're swiping your credit card and your pants are filling up. <laughs> Spirit Frontier is like li- literally ca- the the plane from Con Air. It is. Yeah, it's just you and a cannibal. Yeah, a, a, a guy who's got a a thirteen rape roses tattooed on him for every victim. <laughs> just like, where are you going, the flight attendant? Yeah, there's nowhere. Why, why would you go to Barcelona? Like, if you're going to take a flight, I understand if you're going to go a state away, but you're going to a different country and you're like, look, I think I can hold it <laughs> on a plane. Hang on. Let me chance this Indian food before I get on. That's the problem is like, this isn't that rare, though, these days. Like, even on Air Canada just recently, two Canadian passengers, two Air Canada, I shouldn't say they were Canadian. I'm jumping the gun. But two Air Canada passengers were kicked off uh, because they didn't want to sit on vomit-covered seats. The airline had put coffee grounds on the seats and sprayed perfume to mask the smell. Why didn't you just wipe it off? Oh, my God. You're decorating it? Did they just pour wood chips over it like a kid threw up in church? Yeah, basically. (laughs) It's just doing what a janitor did in the 80s. They're like, here you go. It's coffee grounds. And you're like, well, I wanted to sit there. And they're like, right. I don't even really blame them because you know there's 200 other people like going, oh, we're, we're going to wait for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's the problem, though. Is that why wouldn't you notice that? You're like, there's coffee grounds all over my seat, and they're like, don't worry, it's just vomit. We covered it in coffee grounds. <laughs> this is, this is, why? There's a six foot three you got autistic guy going, take off. I have to middle in Rosemont, Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> Now it smells like, now it smells like like vomit and co- coffee grounds and stripper perfume. Well, another passenger documented documented the incident on Facebook, and he wrote, uh, "The passengers got themselves settled with blankets and wipes, and the next thing we knew, the pilot came down the aisle, and very calmly knelt down and told the two ladies that they had two choices: they could leave the plane on their own accord, wow, and organize." Uh, and organize flights on their own dime, or they would be escorted off the plane by security and placed on a no-fly list. Can you imagine being like, there's vomit on my seat, and the pilot's like, listen, you got two choices. (laughs) You can either sit in the puke, or you can get off the plane, and you can never fly again. What's your choice? You're going to snuggle up to that vomit. Like that's basically what that's what he said. They didn't even give him that option. He just says you can get off the plane on your own accord and buy your own plane ticket, yep. or you we're gonna pull you off by security and you're gonna be on a no fly list. So either way, they're not gonna fly. Right. They're like, listen, we did what we're supposed to do in these. That's what I love. You got to wear a mask on a plane because you're not. You, you don't have to. So don't get me wrong. That you want to now. Yet. But they want to suggest wearing masks on planes because they don't want a germ to spread. But somebody vomits all over a seat and they're like, look, we poured coffee grounds on it, fella. Sit down. Saddle up. Lady. Quit your bitching. And that had to smell to everybody. Of course. I mean, because everybody knows. We, you've, been, you've been in planes before where, you know, a baby, you know, goes to the bathroom in their diaper or you see, uh, you know, anything. I you s- smell everything. I sat next to a drunk Englishman who had just eaten uh, the creamy ravioli on Delta, and we were not having a very good flight. Mm. Oh. And the whole time he's rocking, and he's like, ugh, ugh. and I'm just looking at him, and I'm like, this dude's going to vomit. I know he's going to vomit. Like, as he starts grabbing the- Is it like Mr. Creosote from The Meaning of Life? It looks just like him, yeah. <laughs> and you knew he was going to puke, and he kept ordering liquor, and I kind of wanted to look at the flight attendant and go, like, I think that's too much. Like, I've been sitting here, like, I'm not even halfway into my movie, and I'm pretty sure you've served him, like, four times. Mm -hmm. And he's just like, and he's eating the creamy, awful ravioli, and I'm like, oh, it's going to be creamy. And it was. Right when, and he's grabbing the bag, and you're not going to, the bag's this big. He did get sick. Yeah. He's sitting right next to you? Yeah, right next to me. It's not the first time. Ah, oh. many people have because I have to fly every week. I've never had that happen. I've never had somebody get sick next to me. Oh, I've had a girl once who was so embarrassed. She's like, I'm sorry. I go, you should be, you pig. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me you said no, that. No, I didn't. I felt bad for her. I was like, I'm sorry. I go, it happens. I go, we all, we all can be a little nervous on a flight. 
with that guy, I was like, you're a, ugh. Like, I was seriously looking at him and being like, oh, gross. Because it's his fault. He was ugh. drunk. He made the choice. Right. And then he hit turbulence, and he's just, uh, uh, he's making noises like English people make. There's just been. <laughs> before they vomit. <laughs> just, oh, dear. Oh, no. <laughs> Boo. My creamy ravioli. <laughs> All over. That's how bad English food is. That, that ravioli sounded appetizing. Dude, I hate, I don't know, any of that food. I like sitting first class just to be better, but I don't like the food. No. I, I don't blame you. No. Well, you are better. I am. Well, I know. That's why I sit up there. I don't pay that much money to Delta so I can have an aisle full of diarrhea. <laughs> That's the worst. Yeah. Matt and I have flown together. That's when I buy... Uh, mid-grade seats, and I watch him try to struggle with his long legs. You put him back oh. there in steerage? Yes. <laughs> no, I just... Hang on, Matt, I got you a middle seat. Well, airplane tickets are so expensive now. The fact that you would be rude to anybody who's like, hey, this seat was $14,000. Could there not be vomit on it? And they're mm -hmm. like, listen, you pilot, you've got two choices. You piece of garbage. You can either get off the plane of your own accord, or I can kick your ass in front of everybody here. The pilot's just like an abusive stepfather. Yeah, it's just... <laughs> like you're on a family trip to up north that you don't even want to go on. <laughs> yeah, it's just... He doesn't want you there either. No. <laughs> he just wants to bang your mom. Yeah. And you're in the way. <laughs> he just wants to get drunk by a lake. Yeah, that's all he has left. That's it. Probably play his guitar and maybe hit her. <laughs> With the guitar? Either way, whatever teaches her. Someone's getting corked. I'll tell you what doesn't give me pleasant feeling. What's that? Bed sheets. Most bed sheets. I just don't like them. But I'll tell you what I do like. If you go to trymiracle.com yeah. and use slash normal, you can try miracle sheets. They are absolutely amazing. They are self cooling. They got self cooling properties. They're self cleaning. They have silver infused fabrics that keep you perfectly temperatured. Ooh. Temperate all night long. I love them, honestly. Uh, they sent them, they actually prevent bacteria, which is great because I drag in the bugs. And I, and they also keep it from clogging your pores, which is a good thing because sometimes I get the acne sitting next to British guys who vomit on Delta flights. But I really do enjoy a nice pair of sheets. And when, you know what I mean? Not just to cut eye holes in, but, <laughs> but to actually. <laughs> but no, really. I do enjoy a nice pair that's of sheets. the guy in the chat who hates the show. Yeah, that's he. Just, <laughs> he's like, yeah. Gee. Yeah, no, that's true. I, I, it's only, it's only 20% of the subs. But I, I'll say. <laughs> No, but honestly, they sent me these sheets, and I'm never sure about stuff when you get them. And I used them, washed them, put them on, and I got to tell you, they're nice because I'm a very hot sleeper, believe it or not. I'm sure you believe it because you both have been around me, and I'm a very, I'm a very warm man. I'm always heated up. We both shared a queen size bed with you in a La Quinta. <laughs> we both have. And you know that I... I've, I mean, I've shared a room with you in a in a roadside inn. Yeah. Yeah, you have. In Fort Lee, New Jersey. That wasn't a good day. That was no, a that was choice. a bad day. I picked the wrong place. But you know what they didn't have at that? Miracle sheets. Yeah. No, they should have. Yeah, they should... Well, they had the complete opposite of miracle sheets. They were not self-cleaning and they were not clean. Miracle-made sheets are... Both of those things. So why don't you go to trymiracle.com slash normal. Honestly, I'm a really hot sleeper. It's very, very aggravating with most sheets that I buy. These things are awesome. Plus, if you use the promo normal at checkout, you get three free towels and you save 20%. Look at that. So if you aren't 100% satisfied too, you will get a full refund within 30 days. That's a full. That's all your money back. So what are you risking? You're risking nothing. Go to trymiracle.com slash normal and use code normal to claim your three-piece towel set and save over 40% off. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash normal. Go treat yourself. You deserve it. You, Matt, you deserve it. Yeah, that travel lodge, they didn't have miracle sheets, but they did have a lot of visitors with no luggage and in-state plates. Yeah, they certainly did. Yeah. Uh, 
I think you and I were the only ones not being trafficked. <laughs> and honestly, I wouldn't have mind. I think I would have had a better time. <laughs> In the back of a semi truck. Yeah, dude, that was the dirtiest hotel. Well, I saw it on. It was across. The, it was right across from the George Washington Bridge, so you could just feel all the traffic barely keeping the door, blowing the door open. Oh my god! Because it was held barely by a chain, mm -hmm. and it was ice cold except for where the heater was, where it was scorching hot. And oh yeah, and there was blood on the walls. There was blood on the wall, and I had food poisoning. And you had food poisoning. <laughs> and my father died and, the next day. And you found out your dad was going to die. Oh my God. Yeah, it was a really bad Are trip. You serious? Yeah, it was the worst trip. And we he, we just did a show, and he didn't do well either. <laughs> <laughs> and Matt always kills. And it was because he ate. This woman basically pushed ravioli on him. See, it's ravioli. Ravioli? It was a chicken franchise. Is that what you had? Yeah. Oh, I had the ravioli. Yes. I was fine. But he did. He he ordered chicken. I wanted frame. something with protein. Yeah, yeah. But it's yes. the, the, they they undercook it, which that's part of the thing. Is it's just barely overcooked, which it's not. It, so yeah, it I because the salmonella really brings out the flavor or something. I don't know how it's. Yeah, it really to, does bring. Yeah, it. tangy. It's very tangy. Yeah. So yeah, we ended up staying that in that place, but I think we left fairly early, mm -hmm. and then we were driving through, and he had uh, cramps from. The, the food poisoning. He was upset about the show. Uh, I'm pretty sure there were bed bugs. I wasn't that oh. upset about the show because I, I had to do 15. The feature went up, and then I had to do five in the middle. I bombed the first 15. Yeah, and the killed. five went well. The five in the middle, I killed. Yeah, the five went well. Um, and then, yeah, but then we're driving, and he's got food poisoning, and he found out his dad's going to die. So I'm just trying to, like, cheer him up so i'm like you think our dads will play football in heaven and he's like shut up <laughs> <laughs> my dad actually he held on for a long time after that but he had an emergency surgery and i had to be waiting outside the surgery room in the waiting room literally like holding my knees in the field position oh just and crapping like yellow for six weeks afterward too yeah i dude i felt so bad for you i was trying i was driving on the freeway and i'm just like I don't know how to console this because he's like physically ill, and then he also just heard the like worst news ever, and I, all I could do was make fun of him. <laughs> that's how we cheer people up. Well, that's it. Yeah, we're friends. I mean, that's, exactly. It's what he would do to me. Yeah, I think the, and have and have many times. <laughs> he's put me down at my weakest moments. <laughs> the worst experience I ever had at a hotel. You asked for it. <laughs> of course I did. Just hanging out in my apartment one day. He's like, "Hey, guess what? My mom died." <laughs> Put on a pot of coffee. Wow. <laughs> yeah, we. Uh, but yeah, that was uh, that was a bad trip. But we we you know at least we made good money. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, was that the worst hotel experience for about six months, two years ago? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, know, kidding. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Oh boy, uh, yeah. You know what's actually funny? That was a time where I left a casino with money. So I. Uh, <laughs> when was that time? Yeah, uh, it was before I I liked it. Um, it was before I got addicted to losing. <laughs> I don't actually gamble uh, anymore. Anymore. And when you say anymore, it's because you've hit rock bottom. It happens. You know what? We all have our flaws, and sometimes Dave just has to try all of them on for size <laughs> before he goes, you know what? I can have pleasure. Now, is that the worst hotel experience you've had? Fort Lee, New Jersey. F Fort Lee? Uh, no. No, no, no. I've had worse. I've had scorpions come under a door in, tennis in Tennessee. I had... German rock band? A German rock band? Scorpions? They crawl. Yeah, they... <laughs> Oh no! Yeah, they kicked my door in and they rocked me all night long. And I was rocked like, me. You, they rocked you like a hurricane. Rocked you like a hurricane. Like a hurricane. And I'm like, guys, I'm trying to sleep. I got scorpions in my room. That's <laughs> it's like the time Cinderella busted into his room. <laughs> what? The band. And I said, guys, I'm nobody's fool. <laughs> oh. Mm. Ah, I got that one. Mm. Absolutely. No, I've had definitely way worse. Exp well, no, that was up there. That was top two. About uh, three was probably when a woman was banging on my door asking for a lighter, and I was new on the road. I was probably 22, maybe 21. 
And uh, I called down. I'm like, there's a woman who's clear. And I looked out the window and she's obviously some, you know, junkie. Right. And then there's a guy waiting <laughs> on the other side of the door who's clearly going to attack me when I open the door. Sure. And I called down to the front desk and they're like, yeah, that's Judy. She does that. And I was like, oh, great. So you're in on it, too. So I just had to stay in this room that was painted like a cell. Hiding Ooh. all night, and it was like in the it was like Mississippi, maybe I don't I forgot where it was horrible, but anyway, that was but, so long ago you blogged about it on MySpace. I did, and I misspelled lighter as leader. <laughs> I think we're, we're <laughs> what is yours? I had one in uh Clarksville, Tennessee, it was a little uh mom and pop motel that they would stick you in. You did a gig over there, and it was uh. It was it was awful, and I, I got in the day before because I was c- coming in from the West Coast, and so I get there, and I go to the hotel, and I, I checked in, and they gave me an early check-in, and the maid kept knocking on the door. She thought I was leaving, and I you know it was I had a red eye that came in, and I'm staying there. It was a disaster. So the maid keeps knocking on the door, will not go away, and I'm calling the front desk. And I'm like, oh, no problem. It's all good. It's okay. And so I she kept knocking, and then the next day, I'm trying to sleep in, and I'm actually at the gig that night. She still keeps coming by and knocking, and uh, I, I just got so pissed. I just got so pissed off. I literally jerked off on the alarm clock. <laughs> That's not where I expected that to go. Nobody so you, does. So you just made <laughs> you just made everyone else pay for it. <laughs> I figured she had to clean the alarm clock. Yeah, that's true. She probably didn't. She probably didn't. No, but that's. <laughs> I had to stay in this hotel it's like once. The saddest, pettiest revenge that only, <laughs> only a comic would take. I know it would. No other person in the world. Yeah. <laughs> it's just so. What I did was I grabbed the remote <laughs> and inserted it. Yeah, that's. <laughs> I sit in this one place that had um, this really sticky alarm clock, <laughs> and it just kept going off all night long, and I couldn't find where it was plugged in. I'm sorry. The buttons were all ruined. I, no, the worst place... Well, Matt, what about you? I have a story, but I may have told it on this show, so I don't want to... It depends. It's either the one, the motel in Duluth, Minnesota, which was one where I drove 12 hours to get to Duluth, checked into the motel, had to wait, and then when I got in, I was like, what did you make me wait for exactly? Because it's a no country for old men motel with a, with a front desk woman who looks much, much older than she's dressed like because she's just been ravaged by methamphetamine. And... <laughs> It's even more insulting because I know during the, uh, the the other seasons the guy has a good hotel that he puts you up in, and then he laughs in your face about putting you up in the bad one because I literally just because oh, yeah. well, I was driving with a friend of ours and we literally just did the show and turned around exhausted on no sleep for another twelve hour drive because it just wasn't worth it. To oh, sleep. he would put you in that little awful yeah. white one. Yeah. I remember he sent me there, and I was like, no. no. I go, I'm not doing a show, and then he put me in the Holiday Inn. I remember, oh. I remember, the, I remember the game. Yeah, I was like, I'm yeah. not going to do it. That's where a guy came up to me and said, he goes, he goes, you coming to Duluth? Why, because they're building a honky rink? <laughs> and he was serious. They were building a hockey, a hockey rink, but he kept calling it a honky rink, and he was very pissed with me about it. Like, I specifically was there to play hockey. I mean, he's not wrong. I mean, look, I, it is a honky There's rink. a lot of white people at a hockey but rink. But it was just funny. Like, I was just sitting there trying to, like, play pool, and he's like, dumbass honky rink. And I'm like, is that? I'm like, look, I, I didn't vote for any of this. I'm like, I don't, I don't. The one that I stay You're at. the one in Duluth, buddy. Yeah. By the way, why are you in Duluth? <laughs> I think you came to the wrong place. <laughs> who, who are you hiding from? Uh, so I... Uh, <laughs> yeah, what is this? Sister Act? <laughs> so I... Um, what I did was... Uh, this is... Uh, you know this story. I've probably told it on here maybe. But I was at a holiday... It was uh, like a nice holiday inn. Uh, sort of. It wasn't a nice holiday inn, really. Now that I... At the time, I wouldn't have known. So I go into the room, and there's lightning bugs everywhere. And I call down, and it's in Alabama. And they're in the room? They're all over the room, dude, like a planetarium. And I call down, and she's like, the lady goes, well, is, is that season? I go, well, it might be that season, but I don't really want to be in a room filled with bugs. Could I have a <laughs> new room, please? And she goes, 
well, I mean, if I put you in a new room, there's going to be bugs in there. And I was like, honestly, I'll take my chances. I just don't want to have a room full of lightning bugs. She's like, oh, all right. And then she moves me and I get in and I'm like, all right, there's no bugs in here or whatever. So then I turn off the light and I start seeing them. There's just lightning bugs. And I call down. I'm like, look, I, I seriously need a room that's not filled with bugs. They're like coming in the air conditioner or something. She's like, yeah, it's what happens. And she, I was like, yeah, I just, I need a room without bugs. She goes, well, I can send an exterminator. I was like, oh, that would be great. Thank you so much. Dude knocks on the door. I get to see this. Clearly the janitor. Yes. And he walks in and goes, you the one who called the exterminator? And I go, yeah, that was me. He goes, great. Takes his shoe off <laughs> and starts crushing all the lightning bugs that are smearing with his boot, his dirty boot. And he's standing on my bed doing it. <laughs> and I'm just watching this in horror. <laughs> And then he, he gets off and he goes, all good, your highness? <laughs> and I said, yeah. And I was basically terrified. So I tipped him. <laughs> I gave him $5. I was like, Th thank you. And he's like, yep. And then he just walked out. And I just sat terrified in this room with just lightning bugs everywhere. Lightning bug juice all over the place. Yeah, and then even when I told like the headliner and like a couple other people, you know, about it, they were just like, the headliner was in a different hotel, so he didn't have that problem. And then people at the club were just like, yeah, you know, it's the south in the summer, and I was like, that's a problem. Like, you can't have bugs flying all over your face while you're trying to sleep. I, lo I love her answer. Well, it's the season. It's also deer season. I don't see them running around my room either. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. It's, it's, it's insect season in your hotel? My oh. My mistake. I didn't mean to complain. Whoopsie. Yeah, I'll make sure that never happens again. <laughs> Unreal. Yeah. I've stayed in a lot of hotels that are just... It, I, I'm surprised I'm alive. No, because you stayed in those places, your immune system is just built up. Oh, it's either that or it's, a, it's barely hanging on. <laughs> Maybe that's why COVID didn't hit me as hard as so many people <laughs> while I say that should knock on wood. COVID, COVID walked up to you, saw everything that your body's gone through, and it said, there's nothing more we can do. Like, what, what are we going to do with this guy? <laughs> I don't know. Let's move along, Dan. There was five six from hurting himself. <laughs> you had some COVID on top of a chocolate mousse cake, and you just shit it out the next morning. <laughs> I really have IBS. Yeah, you do. I mean, it is something. If there's a sponsor out there that can help me out with IBS, that would be good because it is ruining my top of the line miracle sheets. They're, they're self-cleaning, and then there's that. And then there's just a disaster. I hate, I seriously can't stand it. There's always like, uh, there's, some people think that I got a, a, a beer belly, but in the morning when I wake up, it's not there. Ask Matt. Yeah, no, when, when the show is late, it's because he's in the bathroom texting loved ones goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I forgot where we ate, and you were like, what? You're like, you okay? I'm like, I'm I'm texting my son by. <laughs> That's a good one. That's just the I have to buy oh the wipes I have to buy that have I forget the name of the medicine in it, but I know the color of the package. But it's it's just so you know, when I wipe they can't hear me scream. Well so when you say we're gonna meet up somewhere and you're running late and you finally come, you don't have to tell me. No. I know. I know, oh, I know you I already know. You can tell us I'm limping off the elevator. <laughs> It's like what happened? Oh, I ate a sandwich. I had I had any form of food. You just see the maid in the break room just crying. You walk by oh. and go, "Oh, clean three fourteen. That's mine." I'm always like, "Sorry." I've actually checked into hotels and just brought a plunder because I don't want to call down and use theirs. <laughs> and I have rigged I have rigged hangers. Anyway, it's not really important, but there are ways to rig that. But then you got to break them good so they don't hang them back up. Because I don't want other people to use <laughs> my my duty hanger. Not for me. Like I, it's for the what gets clogged, you know. Because they're like, don't flush those wipes. And well, I wouldn't think you'd use it on like, yourself. Yeah, I'll keep them in a trash can. I'll throw. Like, like, is that what you want me to do? You want me to throw my wipes in a trash can so it looks like I have a I have a two hundred pound baby? I like <laughs> how you qualified the hanger. I didn't use it on me. 
I use it on the toilet. Like, like you're like literally like you couldn't like your. <laughs> I just think I don't know if it's locked your keys in your car. It's anxiety or what? It might be. Why are you looking at me like I have the answer? I don't know. You you're pretty good with stuff <laughs> with with your IBS. Well, not with. I mean, I would. I mean, I would suggest you doing some type of elimination diet. I did, Matt. I eliminated everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, have you tried Jordan Peterson's diet? What's that? What is a steak? Just steak? Yeah, just all meat. It's the all meat diet. It's uh, you know, it's cured all of his uh, daughter's arthritis. And, oh, that's right. Yeah, I could do an all meat diet. Mm-hmm. But then I feel like I'd be like you and I'd have gout. Am I trying to not share that? I don't care. I already did. I don't care. It doesn't matter. You get gout on occasion. Once in a while, yeah. We call it the King's disease. Yes. Is that Elvis? No, because then you would just sit on the toilet and just blow my <laughs> ass out, which becomes your disease. And since you were already labeled your highness by the janitor at the hotel in Alabama, <laughs> you clearly hold that. You hold the crown, so who am I to who am I to judge? It's when your liver is filled with pill powder and you die on a toilet. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's the king's disease. Oh, that's sad. That mm -hmm. happened to him. <laughs> he just has Percocet in his stool like corn. Yeah, just <laughs> <laughs> he probably did. Like you know, you're not even digest. Do you even feel high? He's just like, I don't know what happened now. And then right when he gets up to the piano, for some reason, he can play and sing. And the second it's done, he's just like, all right. Well, I mean, it's the dr it's either the drugs or that his favorite sandwich was a loaf of bread stuffed with butter and peanut butter and bacon. And bananas. Yeah, butter, and, bacon, bananas. and bananas. Yeah. Yeah, it's called a fool's gold loaf. And he was literally hanging out with cops one night. And he told him about the sandwich he had in Denver. And one of them was like... I'd like to have that. I'd like to try that. And never mind the fact that he's in Graceland with a private chef. He just charters the Lisa Marie and flies them to Denver from Memphis and wakes the guy up to make fool's gold loaves for everybody. Because <laughs> that's the world Elvis lived in. They're like oh. Elvis is here. He's shooting at a television. <laughs> he wants you to make peanut butter and banana sandwiches like you would need to go somewhere for that. <laughs> good Lord. I, that's a good life. That's a life well lived, though. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. I mean, not not a long life, and sure, you were robbed by your agent, but I mean, come on, who hasn't been? You're robbed by your agent? No, you're robbed by your agent and died on the shitter. <laughs> eh. I like how we said, a life well lived. <laughs> Asterisk. Yes. <laughs> yeah, besides, you know, uh, I've... Uh, he pretended to be a colonel, not a Republican. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Why did the did the colonel ever wear a mask on a show? <laughs> it's not humiliating. So a three-legged bear broke into a Florida home, drank three white claws, and left. The bear then uh, went to a restaurant and got the manager. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, he's coming. I don't know, but oh my god, there's a literal bear in our patio. No, no, no. I feel like I gotta lock all the doors now. Oh, no, look, he just opened the door. <laughs> He's about to take the beer. He's about to take the beer. He's just about to take the beer. There ain't no food in there, buddy. Look at this. The kid's 13 recording it, and then the dog Bruno finally scared uh, uh, the tripod, the three legged bear, away. I, bears are, dude, bears will get in. Like, Wyatt threw a burger off of a balcony in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And I was like, it says don't do that. I'm like, well, it's not like there's really going to be bears. And like mm -hmm. two minutes later, man, there was a black bear at the bottom and he was starting to climb up the uh, uh, side of the house. And I'm just like, nope. Wow. No, no. And then, like, like families of black bears are out there. I'm like, all right, don't throw any more food for... Re like, they, like, when they say don't feed the bears, that sign's there for a reason. There was this, a soup, there was this uh, campground that we had stayed in one time in uh, northern uh, Minnesota, right by the Boundary Waters. Yeah. And all the area, I mean, it's extremely full of, you know, very active wildlife. Bears, the whole shot. And so yeah. there was this annoying family in the cabin next to ours. And we had made ribs. So we had all the bones and the family, the kids are just screaming, acting obnoxious and all this stuff. And so I ended up tying one on, grabbed all these rib bones and went over because the cabins are lifted up. 
on stilts a little bit. And so yeah. I took, took all these rib bones and I chucked them underneath the cabin. <laughs> And so, so all you hear in the at night is you started hearing this you know rustling around and then and I mean they're right next door <laughs> and so you're hearing some commotion you could hear everything because there's no insulation it's just right. log cabins just the sound of children being eaten because you didn't like them. <laughs> it was so it was just hearing hearing the dad on the like jumping up and down on the patio going you know go away bear. Go away. I'm like, that's working. Well, it's like I live in Florida next to rental properties and bears, so I'm going to try that. Yeah, that's a good point. Oh, yeah. Like some gators. I don't like alligators. I'm going to go ahead and say it. If there was an alligator here tonight, I'd tell him that right to his face. You're so brave. Yeah, well, I don't like him. And he'd be like, hey, I'm a crocodile. Is that, the, is that what they do? <laughs> you misidentified him. Oh. Well, I don't know the difference between them stupid things. They're all lizards. <laughs> I think. Yeah, you do have you do live near Disney World. I shouldn't I don't know. I live about like show. 15, 20 minutes away. That doesn't really narrow it down. <laughs> no, that's true. There's a lot of You people. didn't give out my address, which is only online if you look for it anyway. <laughs> Five two four six Elm. Orlando, yeah, Florida. I don't know. Uh, well, that's <laughs> that does suck though. Yeah, t- I don't like renters. No, no offense if you're a renter, you're just low rent. Well, no, I mean it's just people. It's just vacationers, and so you just like have to cross your fing- their, your fingers that they're going to be cool, and and if they're not, that they're not there very long. Oh, it's an Airbnb right next door to you. Yeah. Oh yeah, and he's got a nice house. It's paid off. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, my wife manages the, the Air- my wife manages the Airbnb too, so she gets paid for that. It's just you know, some of the renters are du- dicks. Well, of course they are. Some people want to act like they own the house because they've rented on Airbnb for a week. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And they treat it like a hotel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, where they, they care less. They don't read the instructions of how you got to clean it afterwards. Mm-hmm. I know. I go to this place in Florida all the time. It's next next door to this autistic guy's house. <laughs> And I just ruin everything. I masturbate on all the alarm clocks. <laughs> and sometimes I just leave bones. <laughs> that was, okay. <laughs> oh, we talked about this the oh other God, day. God, my wife manages the room. If somebody did that to an alarm clock. Oh, it'd be done. She'd dude. be hairless at a 7-Eleven in 20 minutes. I can't imagine how terrified she would be. Oh, my God. Well, she would, she would, she would call me and make me clean it. Yeah, that's true. And you'd probably just come over and not even put on gloves. <laughs> you'd probably just use your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's the thing is, my wife did twelve step cognitive behavioral therapy for her OCD, and we have such a great relationship. But she even sometimes she says, like, if if I had met you before that, I don't know if it would have worked. It wouldn't have worked. <laughs> There's no. <laughs> How would it have worked? <laughs> There's no way. I don't know. Mutual attraction, I don't compatibility, think so. the fact I don't, the fact that we love each other. I, I don't know how that any of that goes. <laughs> I was watching your face while he's saying that. And he might as well have been just reading stuff from the Arabic phone book. Well, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> Things don't read like that for me. Compatibility, Compatib- love, love. <laughs> I got nothing. Well, yeah, but he's just, he's a messy guy. Mm. Not, you know, just in the sense of not, compared to her, she's very germaphobic. Well, she's just very, she, she's OCD, but it's positive too, because she's just very thorough. And, uh, you know, she's, when the, one of the things that attracted me about my wife the most is, she's, as I said, well, you know, I've, I've dated flaky people. And she's like, I'm the exact opposite of flaky. And she is. And it's like, the second she texted me back immediately, I'm like, that's the one. It's actually true. His wife's hilarious as well. I've heard very she's sm- I've heard she's wonderful. Smart. Met my wife. Red. Yes, I did meet her. Yeah, at Bob's house. Yes, that's right. Yeah, look at that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and they, your your daughter's, my goddaughter, might I mm-hmm. add, is about to turn Uno. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. October 12th. I know. Mm-hmm. You have to give out birth dates and stuff. Yeah, I mean, maybe people will send stuff. Yeah, if you want to, send some good stuff. Like, for don't be weird. All right, so a gender reveal party in Mexico tragically resulted in the death of a stunt pilot. We talked about it a little earlier this week, but we were not able to show you the clip. Fortunately, we were able to obtain the clip 
to end our week strong. I like how no one cared that the plane crashed. <laughs> they were all just like, it's a girl, yay! Meanwhile, there's a man burning alive. <laughs> how self-important are you that your gender reveal party has to look like Dunkirk? I know, why would you hire that? That's gotta suck, too, to be a pilot, and you're like, well... Well, as I mean, yeah, knowing you're gonna die for that. Yeah, your last mission is flying over a party. I mean, you're in the Air Force, yeah. decorated. <laughs> now, you're, now you're relegated to a biplane, dumping pink dye over right. a, over some stupid gender reveal party. Yeah, and unfortunately, yeah. You... <laughs> An unmaintained biplane, I mean, you're, biplane, prob you're probably apparently. lit like Randy Quaid at Independence Day. Oh, I'm sure you are. There's no way you're happy up there. No. Probably did it on purpose. You're like, I'm going to get real drunk and ruin this whatever quinceanera. Is that a thing? <laughs> it is, but that's not what this is. I know. But it's... <laughs> <laughs> I just think gender reveal parties suck. But before we get to that part of the show, to end it for this week, I want to go ahead and let you know where people are going to be. Derek, where are you going to be? I'm going to be in uh, Owasso, Michigan at the uh, Lebowski Center on Thursday, October 5th. That is uh, Owasso, Michigan, LebowskiCenter.com. Grab yourself uh, some tickets there. And then myself and Mr. Dave Landau here. We're going to be in uh, Lexington, Michigan on uh, Friday, October 6th at the Lexington Theater. And then Saturday, October 7th, we'll be at the State Theater in Bay City, Michigan. And then October 12th through 14th, I will be at One Night Stands Comedy Club in Waterford, Michigan. And you can come see Matt McClowry and myself at Port Charlotte, Florida, at Visani's. So in Port Charlotte, Florida, at Visani's, uh, September 15th and 16th. And, and I will also be at One Night Stands, October 5th through 7th. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Oh, nice. So you can see Matt and Derek. Back to back. Back, back to, to back, back weeks. Back to back. Friendship. <laughs> <laughs> And September 22, 23, I'll be at the Wonders Theater in Myrtle Beach. There'll be wonders there. Like wonders of the world. Mm-hmm. Like me. You are a wonder of the world. I am. Like, why does all the food I eat hurt my anus? People... For any of Dave's shows, bring a spunk-covered alarm clock for two-for-one tickets. That's right. Matt will be there. He won't be there. I wish he was there, but he's not. Don't cry. It's okay. I don't know. I just want to go to Myrtle Beach with a friend so I can go to the beach, but now I'll have to go by myself. I'm going to wear a big sun hat so I don't catch a burn. And swimmies. Yep. So mm -hmm. you don't drown. And I'm just going to stand there. Maybe really we could just come and hang out. Real effeminately like this. And I'll just be like, hey, everybody. What's up? How's the water? Cool? I need some lotion. Cool water today or hot? <laughs> How's that? Who's rubbing down daddy? Yeah. I'll be like, you want me to put sunscreen on you and any of the kids there? <laughs> Dude, it's wearing Crocs. Any, any, it's any, Myrtle any. Beach. You look like David Beckham. Well, that's true. <laughs> I will be the sexiest man in Myrtle. Oh, that's sad. Especially because my face is dripping. All right, now we bring you onto a part of our show we like to call the end of the world. Guys, I'm going to ask you a question. Besides what we just saw, what is the worst way to reveal your child's gender? I would say a, uh, hmm, I'd say have a food truck party. Okay. Everybody shows up. You get hot dogs, it's a boy. Tacos, it's a girl. <laughs> I actually think you should do that. I like that it. would be funny. Matthew, uh, mm -hmm. you look always uh, happy and satisfied. Oh, jeez, people in glass houses. That's right. <laughs> yeah, it's, called, it's called projection. Um, it's, uh, maybe it's just because I'm jealous that you are happy. So what would you think would be the worst way to do a gender reveal? By releasing a virus from a lab. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say you could... Surprise him. Like, if you really want a boy, right. paint the room blue. 
But if it's a girl, use lead paint, pink. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We will be back next week, Tuesday, same time, same place, Miracle Sheets.